Hello, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hello, my name is Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you wanna go? Come on, baby, don't you wanna go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet home Chicago. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. The real Marty Levinson. All these people have been doing me for seven years, maybe eight years, but I really am the Marty Levinson that you all want to see. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host of 22 years on television, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. Presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself, Dallas, up on the web at www.ntnm.org. About 350 shows, 350 shows, wonderful. 350,000 shows, that's a little better watched. Um, sometimes I wish it was 350, I'd, I'd hear a lot less complaints. And uh, communitypolicingcamps24.org. Hooray for the... Um, Downtown for putting two more police officers in each district in community policing. I think you even need to put more than that, but we need to hire more policemen and give policemen more freedom to do the things that they should be doing and not geld and disembowel their ability to keep peace in neighborhoods and all the rest of it. And when peace isn't made, things wind up going to court. When things wind up going to court, they go before judges. And by the way, I'm making this up on the spur of the moment, like I do with everything. I have no script. And when things go to court, you have judges. And when you have judges, you have judicial elections. And when you have judicial elections, there is actually very little media covering it. But I know two guys that like to cover judges. One is me, and the other is Chicago's preeminent judicial blogger. Chicago's only judicial blogger, but still preeminent. And he is so good at what he does. The thousands of people that want to be judicial bloggers have just thrown up their hands and say, we're going to leave this to my next guest, Jack Leahy. How are you doing? Avi, thank you for having me. Is Now, I have a question for you. I mean, sure. this is your show, and, and I shouldn't be asking questions. You should. But is this the, the, the last show of the 2016 judicial cycle or the first show of the 2018 judicial cycle? Well, that depends on what you say here. Okay. I'm just asking a question because, you know, 2018 started a while ago. Uh, we're, we're just now, we've just spent the last 10, 15 minutes commiserating about the election uh, and the outcome of... Uh, of uh, of things and, and, and I, you know, I, I've just uncurled from a fetal position, but um, well, I thought America was screwed either way, frankly. So uh. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, look, you know, forget about the presidential election. Let, let's just talk about for a minute. Look, I'm a, a White Sox fan. I couldn't watch television at all between the Cubs, <laughs> between the Cubs and the legislature, uh, you know, uh, commercials. Yeah. Uh, forget about forget about Trump and Clinton. I mean, you know, Mary Marwig and Michael McAuliffe was just every night. The, the postman. Uh, and they were lies. Oh. No, but there wasn't a single true word in almost any political commercial I watched. Uh, they were the most, uh, uh, Mark Twain would call them stretchers. Uh, they, they, stretchers uh, is a kind word. Uh, it, it is. Uh, it was, but uh, I, I know, I know the, uh, you know, I live in, in McAuliffe's district. And, and I think our, our letter carrier is grateful that, uh, you know, now he's, he's, stuck with uh, just Christmas catalogs because <laughs> the burden of carrying. We had two and three mail pieces a day wow. per candidate in the 20th. I mean, it was to the point where, you know, you couldn't look out the window because uh, there'd be a candidate out there. You couldn't turn on the TV. There'd be a commercial. And if, if you did get through the commercials, they'd have a Cub thing. So I was just, I was just terrible. It was an awful time for me. By the way, I heard a very interesting question on the score. And I stole that question and put it on Facebook. And that question was, and it was addressed to Hillary fans and Cub fans. And that is, would you trade the Cubs World Series win for a Hillary victory? Well, on election night... And, and, you know, I, I really haven't been on Facebook, you know, actually active 
uh, because that's another place where you, you fools rush in where angels fear to tread. I, I, I don't comment on it. I just try to stay. I just try to stay like outside the fray. But totally. I, I was lurking. I was lurking, yeah. and I was looking at it. Uh, and and on election night, I, I saw somebody I know uh, quite well saying, you know, she would gladly trade in the the, the World Series. Oh, title. so you did read that? I, I, yeah. It, it, this was before the score had it. This was on election night. Oh wow! Well, you know, gladly traded in to, to for for uh, a Clinton victory. So I mean, it, it's just amazing how how. Uh, By the way, even if I liked Clinton. Or, and I don't like Trump either. I didn't vote for either one of them, people. Okay, just want to make that clear. Um, no way in hell do I trade in that cup victory. <laughs> you got to have your priorities. <laughs> I, I hope we can say the same in four years. But but the the the, the thing that that I was going to mention. By, by the way, you can hope for the same situation they have on Designated Survivor on ABC. <laughs> you know, you get a joint session of Congress, you get everybody oh, there, boy. you get the Supreme Court there. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> and yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. the uh, views expressed here are solely those of Bobby Myers. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. <laughs> and all letters and, and, and protests should be addressed to Mr. Myers. By the way, the, the actually the single most intelligent thing I've seen so far out of the post-election coverage is the fact that the uh, Democrats are delaying their vote in the U.S. House. It's about time they realized it's like we need younger leadership. You know, maybe Nancy Pelosi has seen her best days. She's certainly seen her best plastic surgeries a long time ago. They haven't been recently. Did I just mention? So, <laughs> no, I, look, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to have some analysis on, on both sides. I mean, both sides have some very serious soul searching to do. But I think one of the things that we, we the people, you know, those of us in the great unwashed have to do is, is do some soul searching as well. I mean, we are, are a nation that has now uh, locked ourselves in echo chambers. We were talking about Facebook. I mean, now I, I exempt you, Avi, because I know you, you have a very wide uh, base of people that you, you communicate with on Facebook and you, you, you know, you, you see people from all sides. And I do, because I do the political blog and I, mm. I but... You know, Got to be have, fair. But I have family, you know, yeah. uh, that the, 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 I have uh, defriending each other, uh, you know, uh, friends who are not uh, not talking to people, uh, you know, de deleting posts and, and, and whatever. And it's it's just, no, we have to get outside of our echo chamber. We have to stop reinforcing, hearing only the things that we agree with. I saw a great thing uh, just this morning on uh, uh, Huffington Post, and it said, uh, and the headline was something like, uh, um, Bernie Sanders uh, and Gary Johnson can still be president and vice president. And, and so, okay, I bet I clicked on it to read what the heck they were talking about here. And he says, and, and the, the, the gist of the piece was 90% of the people who, who, who see this headline will just uh, either retweet it because, or, or you know, share it because they, 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 they like the idea or they hate the idea. But uh, very few people will actually read it. And then the, the article was really about how uh, we have to stop just listening to our own preconceived notions and get beyond and, and, and actually go out and, and, and try and cultivate sources of information beyond those that we already have. I mean, what did Mark Twain tell us? He said, if you, uh, if you show me a person who does not read a newspaper and I'll show you somebody who's ignorant. Right? But he yeah. also said, show me a person who reads only one newspaper, and I'll show you a person who is misinformed. Right. And, and so, so we have to, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, sorry to, you know, our friends in the, in the working press, but, uh, you know, we're, we're in a kind of a post-newspaper era. Everything is, is websites and, uh, you know, YouTube and all these crazy uh, tweet, but tweets. But you know what? I don't watch. But we need to go beyond what we have, uh, you know, the, the things that agree with us, and then start looking for things that we don't agree with and start to do, and if I can use a famous tr sure. Clinton term, triangulate, to try and figure out what's really going on in the world. And you have to. You know, it's funny because in the 70s when there were four newspapers in Chicago and I started covering stories for different papers, I would be at an event. I would read the accounts of that event in all four Chicago newspapers, um, there'd be at least three radically different pieces, if not all four, about what happened that day. And then I know what I saw, and what I saw they didn't see. 
Right. And there's the old story about the three blind wise men and the elephant, right? And the, the first blind man comes out, the wise man, he taps the elephant on the side and he says, ah, this is a wall. And the second one crawls in low on the floor and he grabs one of the legs of the elephant. He says, no, this is a tree. And, and the third wise man comes over and grabs the trunk and he says, you're both wrong. This is a snake. Now, there are three wise men, yeah. but they don't have the complete picture. And that's the problem with us today. None of us have the complete picture. We need to start getting out there and, and, and instead of looking at things that tell us that this guy is a crazy person and this guy is a crazy person, maybe we should think for a moment that maybe he can't be so crazy if he can get elected or, or appointed or whatever. We need to find out uh, what we have in common, too. And we need to start talking about what we as Americans have in common and that we share and the values that we all embrace. And that is so important. But one thing I will say for the web, and I like to go to real clear politics, um, I probably read much more of the New York Times than, than your average liberal, but I'll also read much more of the Washington Examiner or these conservative sites or the National Review Online than almost any of the conservatives. Because I do want to see as many sides to a subject as I possibly can. And that is exactly, when you know your quote from Twain was terrific, you have to look at, you have to look at how everybody's thinking on a situation. But you know what, it's like not a single major issue in this country has been solved. And even when the Supreme Court has laid down the law you know, it still goes down with animosity on both sides. Well, that's something else that we need to start doing, too. And this is, this is something I suppose we're getting towards the, the judicial in this sense. We have to be a society of laws. Yep. We have to have laws that we follow. We can't have one law for this person and another law for that person. We can't exempt, you know, I, I blame prohibition. Uh, you know, where, where rich people said, well, prohibition is for the, the thrifty working class and we can still drink it at our table because we can handle it. No, no. We have to have a, a, a system where everybody follows the same laws. Yep. And if the laws are bad, and, you know, we're talking about, you know, Chicago being a sanctuary city. That's in the news today as we're taping this. Um, but there's laws in the books that require uh, the reporting of, of, of certain events. Uh, that Chicago is choosing not to follow. If those laws are bad, let's change those laws. Let's not not follow them. Let's figure out what laws we need to change. Let's and let's change them. But By the way, you even see that in the attorney general's office, where if Lisa Madigan thinks a certain law is antiquated because of her philosophy, she won't follow it. Well, you know, this is this is an attitude that has to stop because it's tearing society apart. We need to be able to, to, to uh, agree on what the law is and to follow the law and to respect the and law. And to have an honest conversation on it. Nobody talks about anything and there is no such thing as an honest conversation. Let's talk judicial races. There weren't that many, but we do want to devote time to them since that's what we're here for. Um, there were very few contests. In, in basically, in my... In my range, maybe there's a little, I got a little bit of 13 where Keiki Stefan won. But no, she the, lost. She lost. Oh, she lost. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Kevin O'Donnell won. Uh, well, she was a Democrat in, in, in a very heavily Republican area, the northwest corner of Cook County, uh, Barrington and Palatine and, and uh, Wheeling Townships out there. Yeah. Uh, that That's an area that is traditionally Republican, uh, and and she had a very tough uphill battle. And she, she's a great candidate. Uh, but that's, that was a, a big ask to, to try and win a race out there. Um, the 12th sub-circuit, where we had the four races, was much more competitive. That was extraordinarily competitive. Uh, that was a sub-circuit that was drawn in 1992 to be Republican. And, of course, uh, in recent years, it's broken pretty heavily Democratic. Uh, only two years ago, uh, they elected a Republican for the first time in a number of years. A completely unqualified uh, Republican against the very qualified Democrat uh, Kaplan. And and now we have, uh, you know, in this last race, we broke kind of down the middle. We had four contested races, and we had uh, two Democrats and two Republicans elected. Um, and so it was, a, it was a very competitive area, and I suspect 
uh, it will be competitive in two years. People will be looking at that going, hmm, maybe this is a place where we can actually have a two-party system. See, and that is, I wish that was the case all over the county. I, I really do, because the, the vast majority of the, of this, of the, of the, of the, um, uh, the vast majority of the races were uncontested. Right. And that means you have to vote in the Democratic primary. That means you have to be exactly ready to go. That's why I'm a March. registered Democrat. I'm, a, it, it's not, I'm not a Republican, but the fact is I want to vote in all the judicial races. I want to vote in the county races. That, to me, is really important. So I'm going to be a registered Democrat every single time. Well, the Republicans don't even field candidates. Now, whose fault is right. that? It's the Republicans' fault. Yeah. So. And then when they do, there was a chance for a good candidate for attorney general, and yet this guy, and I couldn't believe, by the way, i got to tell you, I, I, when I have Mark Shipper on later in the day, I'll ask him, he's Dutch. The way these Dutch people spell words is unbelievable. So, uh, like this Vander Cook, it looked like Kay Flucha or Kirka, who, uh, I mean, when I, I couldn't figure out how to pronounce this guy's oh, name. Oh, you mean Chris Von Cook? Yeah. I'm a German, I think. Christopher E.K. Von Cook. That's, I, I thought that was Dutch. No, no, I'm pretty sure it's German. Yeah. He was actually a law school classmate of mine. Oh, so you would know better than me, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, so, yeah, uh, he actually uh, uh, outperformed Trump in the city of Chicago. So, you know, that's, that's interesting to see that, you know, they're talking about Trump's coattails nationwide, but um, now obviously he got swamped, uh, you know, uh, like four to one by Kim Fox. Yeah, com but, a completely unqualified candidate in my book. But the the point is that uh, that as a, he, I'm talking about Fox being unqualified. He okay. he, he actually uh, beat out Trump in terms of the support that he garnered uh, across the county, which is kind of interesting. It's not uh, whatever whatever the pattern may have been elsewhere. Uh, where Trump's coattails supposedly dragged a number of Republicans into office in other states. Uh, it was just the opposite here. For what it's worth. Well, maybe people knew Trump a little better here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let, let's get back to 12 for a minute. You know, not just 12, but, but you know what? We don't have a lot of time. I wonder if my next guest is even... What time is it, Sonny? My next guest may not be coming. I'm starting to think, you want to do a whole show out of this? You know, I can sing and dance a little. Okay. <laughs> well, no, because you know what? There's other subjects to talk about. Um, did, did the results of any of those races in 12 surprise you? Um, no, not really. I mean, uh, like I said, I thought they were going to be uh, competitive races, and they were. Um, the fact that uh, in... in Suburban Cook County, Democrats did extraordinarily well again this year. Uh, partially, that was uh, you know a Clinton phenomenon, as you know. Um, whatever whatever her weaknesses may have been in other places, uh, certainly uh, did very very well in the Cook County suburbs and in the city of Chicago. Um, so, so I expected that uh, that would help the Democratic candidates in twelve. The fact that two Republicans also won. That's interesting. That was interesting, but you said it was basically designed as a Republican thing. Now, you know what? It's interesting to me because seven of the eight candidates were high-quality people. Yeah, and, and, and I don't, I've, I've, I know who you're exempting, and, um, and, and I don't know, I've, I've, I've met him, I've talked to him, I, I, I'm not a bad guy. He may not be a bad guy, but you know what? I, I like to look at the judicial ratings, and his ratings are like thumbs down. Right, and, and, and that's, that's another topic for maybe a different day, I suppose. But Well, actually, we could talk about this here because I've, I talked to a number of people who told me basically this guy throws his name into everything, and he's, maybe he's run a little too often for people to respect him because he's even run for Supreme Court. His wife yeah. basically put her name in everything, and his wife finally got elected to be a judge, and a lot of people that I spoke to didn't think highly of her as a judge. And they're feeling the same strategy here. Well, he'll just throw his name in and hope that someday he'll win. Well, I don't know. I mean, this is a, a, the, the person we're talking about is, uh, you know, spent time uh, a lawyer both in the United States and in Japan, uh, fluent in Japanese, advised uh, international business, uh, was a, a clerk uh, to... Uh, an Illinois Supreme Court justice. Yeah, so it's and, not and by the way, got 48% of the vote against a highly, highly qualified candidate. Right. So I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, not chopped liver, 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you know what? My guest arrived unexpectedly, so I'm going to cut us off here. Okay. And um, anyway, I wasn't I wasn't sure that was going to happen. Um, it, I, I take it all the retention judges were retained. Every single one of them. And the Chicago Bar Association, in a very unusual move this year, actually recommended that. Interesting. Thank I want to thank you very much, Chicago's premier judicial blogger, Jack Lane. Good luck on the freeway, which is already in progress. Thank you. <laughs>